The curvature pen tool is a simplified version of the standard pen tool. It lets you draw complex shapes and paths without needing control. Let's just go ahead and break it down for you. Say we want to follow this line, right? I'm just going to change this so you can see it a little better. Let me just change it to magenta because this whole background's blue. You just click on an edge and you just follow it, right? And once you click another point, you can move it around and it'll actually be curved. You just follow the curve. Keep adding to it, right? And if you want to curve it this way, you bring it this way. If you want to curve it the other way, just drag it the other way. If you mess up on a point, you can just hover over the point and bring it wherever you want. Hit delete once, it'll delete that point. Now if it's an edge or a corner, what you want to do, instead of clicking once, you're just going to double click and then it'll turn it to a straight line, right? You can double click again and then it'll be another straight line. It turns it back to a curve for one click, double clicks for a straight line or a corner. Right? Also guys, if you have a point that is straight or curved and you want to change it, all you got to do, double click on it. It's just a simplified version of the pen tool, guys. Um, you're not going to get as exact selections or paths with this. But it's really good for doing stuff like circles. Say we want to do a circle. Literally just make four points. And it's a perfect circle. Uh, same with the pen tool. You can add points. So you just hover over an existing path. You can add points. You can hover over them and move them. You can add as many points as you want. You can select points uh, by holding down shift. You can select multiple points. Say we got these three selected. Then you can move all three at once. Now for the top options of the curvature pen tool. Um, the only difference between the regular pen options and the curvature pen options are it does not have the auto add or delete box. So if I click pen tool, you'll see it has the auto add slash delete does not have that. When I go back to the curvature pen, same thing. When you go back to the path, it doesn't have an option for auto add slash delete. Um, these are all the options you have up here. And with every tool, you're going to have this first option. It's just presets for that current tool. And this is where you're just choosing between a shape, a path, or pixels. Usually, you're just going to do shape or path. And the options change whether you're on shape or path. Okay. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you shape first. For shape, it works better if you have an enclosed path. I'm just going to make one here. Okay. And then you can actually see the fill. If I choose fill, you can choose a color. You can choose a gradient or a pattern to go in there. You can also choose this color picker and change the color to whatever you want. Also has some options here. You can have a new swatch preset, rename the swatch, delete it. You can copy or paste the fill. Change the thumbnail size. This is right here. This is the thumbnail where you see the preview of it. Uh, then you can append the default swatches, import some swatches, export them, or export swatches for Adobe Exchange. So that's the fill drop down. Then you got stroke. And stroke is just the outline of the path or the shape. Just zoom in so you can see. This just same thing. You can change the color. You can change, uh, pick a swatch that you already have, a gradient or a pattern. Uh, and also, if you choose this with the red line through it, that means you have no stroke or fill if you were in the fill uh, drop down. 
let's just choose white uh same thing with this box you got the color picker and the swatch options after that we got the stroke size you can make it bigger smaller then we have stroke options this is a drop down where you can change between a straight line dashes or dots and then you have your align caps and corners when you hit more options here or if you hit here and come down to more options it opens the stroke dialog box and this is where you can control it a little bit more with the alignment this just shows where the path is compared to the stroke this is at the center you see the path goes down the middle of the stroke inside the stroke is on the inside of the path and outside same concept the stroke is on the outside of the path usually i just leave it at center caps are for the end of paths like if this wasn't connected and it was just like a u this would change the end caps you got butt round or square corners we got miter which is what it usually is set to by default then we got round it just rounds off the corners and then we got bevel it just cuts off the corners um dash line if you click this box you can change how many pixels is for each dash and then how many pixels for the gap in between it so if i brought this down to let's just bring this down to 0.5 right and then we put the gap at one you can see each dash is 0.5 pixels long and then each space in between them is one pixel now you can keep going and put up to three dashes and three gaps if you want but i just leave it like this because it keeps it nice and even you can hit save to save that stroke and then it'll appear down here where it's saved and that's the stroke dialog box uh, and last thing for the stroke options obviously you can save delete copy or paste a stroke next we got the width and the height pretty self-explanatory if you increase the width it makes it wider increase the height it makes it taller uh, you can link them together and increase it and it'll just increase both at the same time after that we got path operations and this is just like the pathfinder panel if you've ever used adobe illustrator um, you can make each shape a new layer you can combine multiple shapes you can subtract from a shape you can intersect shapes or exclude overlapping areas and then you can merge shape components after that's path alignment this just has the align and distribute options if you need them um, you can also choose to align it to the selection or to the actual canvas itself and then we got path arrangement think of these as sheets of paper or layers right this will bring it to the very top of the layers panel um, bring shape forward it'll bring it up one layer shape backwards will bring it back one layer and then move shape to back will send it all the way to the bottom uh, then we got path options obviously this is just the thickness of the actual path this is not the stroke guys this is the actual path itself so you can see the line in between the stroke this just changes the thickness and the color of that if i want to change it magenta you can i just leave it blue default and set to one pixel rubber band this is where if you're clicking here you can see the preview where the line's gonna go if you don't have rubber band then you don't see that preview you just put your path wherever you want it i always keep this on you need it if you're going to be doing handles and curves right you want to see where that curve is after that we got auto add auto delete and align edges 
Uh, so next we go down the path and everything is the same over here the path operations the alignment arrangement path options that's all the same as what i just explained the only thing different for this is the make options so you can make a selection it'll bring up the make selection dialog box you can edit the feather radius um, have anti-alias on there and you can choose an operation so you can make a new selection if you already have a previous selection you can add to it subtract or intersect with it click OK and it just makes an active selection shape you just click it and it turns it into an actual shape layer if you choose mask it makes a vector mask over here and you can always edit it, change it up, move it around, change the points, curve to straight. And this is a little different than a regular mask. You can see it's gray. It's not black and white. Um, that means it's a vector mask and it goes with the path. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.